It's a matter of great honor and privilege for me to be here delivering the keynote speech today and share my experience and thoughts on a subject that's very close to my heart. My excitement to be at this forum is twofold, as I'm a proud alumni, and second, I'm here representing not just the automobile industry, but also a company that's championing the revolution of EVs in our country. I'm sure through the various sessions and panel discussions today, all of you would have gained insights into the EV growth story of India through a technology, supply chain, government, and industry perspective. Before diving deep into electric mobility and its future, I would like to paint a picture of where we are today. The automobile industry alone contributes to 18% of global emissions. Therefore, curbing emissions as an industry is important to drive the world towards a carbon neutral tomorrow. It is imperative for us to accelerate transition towards electrification. Certain countries have set firm timelines for transitioning to zero emission vehicles. For example, UK and Europe have announced complete transition to EVs by 2030 and 2035 respectively. Stringent emission norms and series of actions to speed up the development of a full ecosystem aligned to the set timelines is being adopted. Consequently, automobile manufacturers have pledged investments to phase out ICE vehicles and enhance their EV manufacturing capacity. Globally, manufacturers have also set their own targets to achieve carbon neutrality and have pledged $515 billion to achieve these targets. As the fifth largest economy in the world, achieving net zero is critical for India. Last year, at COP26, through a five-fold strategy, Panchamrit, India committed to achieve net zero emissions by 2070. Moreover, earlier this month at COP27, India launched a long-term low emission development strategy, reaffirming our commitment towards the net zero agenda. India also has an acute problem of air pollution and related health issues. A majority of the top polluted cities in the world are from India, with New Delhi and Kolkata being number one and number two respectively. Given that auto industry is a significant contributor to the issue of air pollution and CO2 emissions, electrification of the auto industry therefore becomes even more important. It will also have the added benefit of substantially reducing dependency on import of fossil fuels. The government of India has been playing a key role in electrification of mobility. With introduction of FAME program, customers have benefited through demand incentives. At the same time, it has supported development of charging infrastructure and R&D work for EVs. FAME program has triggered a great sense of confidence and has provided the much required handholding to customers and ecosystem players to embrace electrification. Almost all major states have also announced enabling policies to drive the adoption of EVs. The recently launched auto PLI scheme has been a major motivation for auto manufacturers to advance their investments in electrification plans and act with greater confidence and urgency. While the government has been instrumental in creating a favorable environment to nurture the EV ecosystem, on the other hand, the role of pioneering companies has been crucial in progressively creating the EV ecosystem and overcoming the barriers to adoption of EVs. Lack of charging infrastructure has been the major concern in the minds of consumers. To address this, public charging infrastructure is witnessing progressive development and more than 3,000 charges have been installed within cities and along major highways. While this number might not seem adequate, a close study of the charging patterns of the early adopters of electric cars has given us the insight that 94% of EV charging needs is being met by the captive home charging solutions. Hence, there is a rising confidence among our prospective consumers that their daily driving needs will be met by the home charging solutions 
even as the public charging stations are increasing in number every month, especially on the highways. Price of electric cars and huge dependency on imported components is a big challenge in the long term. Therefore, localization of EV powertrain components will be essential to overcome cost challenges and mitigate risk of forex volatility and supply chain disruptions. The recently launched auto PLI scheme and PLI for advanced chemistry cells, ACC as we call it, will prove to be helpful in accelerating and significantly enhancing the domestic value addition in EV manufacturing. We are seeing increasing interest and initiative by global and local auto component manufacturers in localizing advanced technology components. Tata Auto Components has been at the forefront of this drive by localizing components like battery packs and motor assembly. Aside from policy and ecosystem development, the rising adoption of EVs in India is also a result of positive feedback from early buyers. Several myths that were present at the early phase of EV rollouts are being overcome by the very expressive early adopters who have become EV evangelists and share their experiences on various social media platforms. This has provided the much needed confidence for many fence sitters to go ahead and adopt EVs. Over 50,000 customers have adopted Tata Motors EVs, a number which seemed a very distant dream a few years back. Nearly 70% of these customers are now using electric cars as their primary or only car. This is contrary to the perception that EVs are suitable to be used only as an additional car. The future is here. India is ready to drive into the next phase of the EV revolution. Certain key actions and focused actions by stakeholders like the government, the industry, partners, and the customers will help in further accelerating EV adoption. We look forward to the continued support from the government, Continuation of demand subsidies and support for localization of the supply chain will help us be on course to the government's Vision 2030, which targets 30% of EV penetration for private cars and 100% for public transportation. Further, India lacks natural resources such as lithium, nickel, cobalt, permanent magnets, which are pivotal in manufacturing batteries and motors. Therefore, fast-tracking initiatives such as Kabil for securing these natural resources will go a long way in establishing the indigenous EV industry in India. In terms of charging infrastructure, it will be necessary to install common AC chargers at residential complexes and workplaces to provide access to charging even for customers who do not have a dedicated parking space. Needless to say, public charging needs to see rapid deployment on highways to overcome range anxiety and not overburden the car with a larger than required battery pack, which otherwise will make the car costly and will have more embodied emissions of additional battery cells. In view of low renewable energy mix of power generation in India, greening of electricity will contribute significantly in lowering the life cycle emission of EVs. Utility companies must work aggressively towards increasing the share of renewable energy in their portfolio. Government has taken an aggressive target on renewable energies as a part of Panchamrit. It is important to emphasize the need for a collaborative and synchronized effort among the various ecosystem players. This will ensure optimization and efficient use of resources while creating the highest impact and benefit for all stakeholders. And I say this with confidence based on our own experience of developing such an ecosystem which is the Tata universe. We leveraged on different domain expertise of various group companies like Tata Power, Tata Auto Components, Tata Chemicals, etc. to work in a coordinated manner and overcome this chicken and egg issue of driving the transition to electrification. Finally, this growth has to be supported with a surge in talent across engineering, technology, manufacturing, and service sectors. Premium institutes like IITs 
can help leapfrog by developing specialized courses in areas pertaining to electric mobility, such as battery architecture. Enhancing industry academia cooperation will also play a significant role in the development of the landscape of electric mobility in the country. We at Tata Motors and Tata Group are committed to India's net zero target and will continue to play our role in enabling the Indian auto industry towards electrification. I look forward to seeing you all soon in person and hopefully also collaborate with you to build India's electrifying future. It's a matter of great honor and privilege for me Wonderful. I hope our thank you reaches Mr. Chandra. We are very thankful for his message. Would have preferred to, uh, him to be here, but since he couldn't, it is the next best thing. Great. Moving on, we are uh, on to...